Oh, I'm recording, I'm recording. Hey, hey, hey. Scott Joplin. Scott Joplin. It's 1902. King of the ragtime jazz. That is the entertainer. And of course, Scott Joplin bringing us in this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Joplin, Missouri. In Joplin, Missouri. You know, we were following a lead on something. We were told that a character by the name of Roger Porter and his sidekick Leanne, who robbed a house of somebody I know over here in Missouri, frequented a casino. So we went and looked last night. We did not see them there. We didn't find them there, but we were told that occasionally they do pop in. So we drove over just to see, just to see. And uh, uh, Wilson, Wilson's with us here. He's had to go to the Waffle House. We got pictures of that. We got pictures of what? Yeah, we do. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, it's Preservation Thursday on Friday. Preservation Thursday on Friday. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. Wilson getting his waffle on at the Waffle House this morning. Hey, some very entertaining stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very entertaining news coming in. Of course, we find out, holy cow, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm from a very arid area of the country. This humidity is kicking my butt, so you'll have to pardon me now and then. A uh, uh, hundred million dollars. Can you fathom that amount of money? A hundred million dollars dollars missing it's gone it's gone that's the number on the bankruptcy a hundred million dollars in other news sherry not sherry let me steal your money not she did it she did it loaned herself a million dollars she loans nfn loans all the right movers Herself, a million dollars, and then claims the debt. Because, of course, she can't pay herself back. Where'd that money go, Sherry? Where'd the money go, lady? You got people out here going hungry, and you're stealing from them. And you're stealing from them while you drive around that Jaguar. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. However, the big news this week, Sherry not dragged into court. And, oh, by the way, had to admit that she did not own. She was only the CEO that Jack Joppa owns NFN. And, of course, Jack Joppa filed bankruptcy on the 18th. We, we got the paperwork. We've seen the paperwork. It's coming in. It's coming in. It's bleeding out there. We're going. The guy, I'm telling you, here's what I want to know. And, and somebody said something to me the other day because I made a comment. I made a reference to money going to the Jewish communities. It's public knowledge. Check the... Cleveland Jewish News, Google Robert Klein Philanthropy. You got the Hebrew Center coming up. You have all this stuff affiliated with the Jewish community. I would be banging it if it was a Catholic, a Baptist, a Mormon, a, a Jehovah Witness, a, a whatever. I, I don't care. I don't care about religion. It makes no, no difference to me. But you need to get rid of a bunch of money. What better way than to make a tax-deductible donation to wash the money? Hello? yoo Knock on the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I find it interesting, and I reported this years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Years ago, I reported that AMS took a member, a fellow member of the National Association of Mortgage Field Services for 22000 bucks. It was an associate of mine over in Nevada, Garrett Donovan, Donovan Contracting. Donovan Contracting, he, he, or Donovan Construction. He, they beat him, AMS beats him for $22,000 after he joined, after he becomes a member. After he ponied up the 300 and some odd dollars to be a member, they rip him off, a, a member. So members and former board members of National Association for Management for Stealing are not immune to theft. Adam Miles listed at an $80,000 bill. I owe this guy 80000 bucks. 80000 bucks. Uh, 
Hey, you know, I got to say thanks to somebody here. I, I, I got to, you know what? We stopped at a store in Branson. Natural Grocers. They had off the hook French roast coffee this morning. Gave me a free cup to try if I gave them a little plug on the air. There's their plug. Great store. Great store. They tell me there's only one or two, maybe three, on the east side of the Mississippi. They haven't got there. Mostly West Coast stores. They got like a, 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 about 200 stores or something like that, 150 stores. I'm not really sure. But really cool store. Very clean. Bathrooms were clean. They have a little area to do education and stuff like that. Natural grocers. Check them out if you're around. Natural grocers. Uh, uh, everything in there. Organic. Everything in there organic. They got a great holistic section, a great holistic section in natural grocers. Yes, sir. Who, what, what are they? Uh, 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 they're just a natural food store. Your real natural food store. That's what they're saying, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to talk to you for just a minute about what's going on here in property preservation and maybe maybe you might want to sit down with an attorney and discuss this element that we're going to discuss here, ladies and gentlemen. Not only do we not know where the money's going, we, we, we don't know. Uh, uh, we do know this for a fact, that Mr. Klein pumped a ton of money into the Jewish communities in New York and Cleveland. Not a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just asking, where did that money come from? Is it legitimate money or is NFN? Was NFN, because this is not the first time something has happened where money goes missing with NFN, is that a money laundering operation? Was that solely set up? Safeguard's been behind them the whole time. Safeguard has been behind them the whole time. And oh, by the way, back in 2010, 11, 12, and 13, all the employees were being told, oh, Safeguard's our competition. They're bad people. The whole time, Sherry Knott is doing the horizontal bop with Jack Jaffa. And guess who's giving NFN work? Guess who's setting things up? They bust booze check up. Amanda comes over gets RMS to NFN. Yeah. You thought we forgot about you, Amanda? Hello. We haven't forgot about you. We haven't forgot about how you stole over a million dollars and how your idiot company laid the groundwork for the independent contractor employee controversy that plagues the industry and the courts ruled that you're an employee. FAS, Bowerman, by law, you're an employee. So stop being silly here, folks. It's, t it's, it's time to take the gloves off. It's time to sit down and have serious conversations with each other. And it's time. It's time. But what I want to talk about, what I want to talk about, when you name Sherry Knott, when you go after Jack Jaffa, they know what they're doing. Attach personal capacity with it. In their personal capacity, you need to put that phrase, in their personal capacity. Talk to your attorney. He'll explain it to you. I, I, I'll be very rudimentary. I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving you legal advice. But I do understand this element in a civil matter. Okay? There are certain things politicians are immune from. But they're not immune from their personal capacity. And neither is Sherry Knott. Neither is Jack Joffa. And neither is Chris Crandell. Neither is Roger Porter. And his little sidekick, Leanne... None of those people are amused. Neither is Erica. G.N.G. Antonio. How are you, girl, huh? How you doing, Erica? None of these people are immune in their personal capacity because they know what they are doing. Personal capacity stipulates. This is what it stipulates. Knowledge of wrongdoing. If they have knowledge of wrongdoing, which not paying you money, stealing the money, embezzling the money... That, my friends, is personal capacity. It demonstrates knowledge. And guess what? We got an employee that worked many years ago with NFN. And uh, uh, this employee is going to, uh, uh, we're going to interview this employee. I, I have to keep the person in confidence. They, they've asked for protection. We're going to put them under the Kwai Tam, the whistleblower law. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to 
protect them because their information, I feel, and a couple other people that I've talked to that have been helping monitor this theft situation and the fraud and the, 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 the basically stealing your money, they say the same thing. This information will demonstrate to the courts pattern of behavior or what is called what you hear in the legal realm in, in on the law shows. Oh, what's their MO? Their modus operandi. A Latin term uh, uh, means how they operate. Their motion uh, uh, and how they put things into play. And this is this is very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. And this is why I started saying back in 2011, start filing complaints. Start filing complaints. Complaint, 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 complaint. Make a complaint with the Attorney General. Make a complaint with your Secretary of State. Make a complaint with the local district attorneys. These complaints will add up. It will show pattern of behavior, whether a charge has been filed or not. There's a complaint. There's a number that goes with the complaint. It's on file pattern of behavior. That is what gets people life in prison when they do two or three, four crimes. California has a three strike law. Of course, unless you're an illegal Nancy Pelosi immigrant, you don't get three strikes put against you or the Kate Steinle uh, murderer would be in prison for the rest of his life. That's what they do, though. They show, well, this is their modus operandi. This is what they do, and this is how they do the other crimes. That's what that's about. Pattern of behavior is very important when people are tracking stuff down. Uh, uh, what else do we got going here? Oh, 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 oh. ProServe, ProServe, Principal Property Solutions, one and the same, one and the same, one and the same. Indemnify them. If they make a mistake, if they're in the wrong, I believe the clause I read in this contract is voidable. No ifs, ands, or buts. It comes off illegal by the phrase, whether at fault or not. I'm sorry, if they're at fault, you can't hold them harmless. You got to, no, I'm... That is a voidable clause. The, employ the contract is a glorified employment contract. It is not a professional contract that includes a mutuality of agreement. It's a forced contract on you. And while we're on that, let's get into a little business 101 for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. While we're talking about this, I spoke with somebody this morning that was licensed in New York and New Jersey, and, and boy, oh boy, I don't know how anybody in New Jersey is doing anything legally by law with all the permits and regulations going on in those two states in the property preservation industry under the numbers granted. It's the same as I pointed out in Nevada. How do you accept, how do you accept debris removal fees at less than $25 when right on the door to the dump? 2576 per cubic yard to dump. How do you accept less than 50 bucks? How do you accept less than 40 bucks at that number and be profitable? You can't. You got to be doing something illegal. You got to be doing something illegal. Now, uh, 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 let me pull something up here. And I'm going to read something from Craig Stanovich. He's a principal consultant with Austin Stanovich, Rick risk management uh, uh, and I'm gonna read something I think it's important to keep in mind that this is a narrow interpretation of additional insured coverage the requirement for direct contract relations is the only option the courts the only option of courts in a couple of states what happened was somebody challenged the additionally insured and the court said look if you're going to be additionally insured, you have to have a contract in play, a direct contract. I cannot be contracted, and we'll just use a, a random order mill. We'll call it FAS since they're not in play and we can't get in trouble for them anymore. So FAS, Field Asset Services, and Alliday Mobile Media have a contract together, and I hire you to do something, and I want you to additionally insure Field Asset Services. New York court said no, and that is also what my attorney said years ago, and this is why I, I spoke with somebody 
their attorney said, why are you going to list a company that background checks you and your employees and credit checks you? They have insurance if they're doing that. We're not insuring them. We're not listing them as additional insured, and we're not listing them as a certificate holder, period. We're not going to do that. Now it's coming out in the courts. National Association of Management for Stealing has been beating people out of money for years. It's got to stop. How's it going to stop? Labor's got to step up. Labor has to step up. And I, I, I want to talk, uh, uh, address Mr. Larry Harris for a minute. Uh, uh, a simple question. I'm going to read some stuff in a thread uh, uh, with Larry Harris here, ladies and gentlemen. Didn't you get huge, burned huge by NFN? Yes, I did. But after RMS pays this week, it will make my contractors whole and cover my legal fees. So I am good with that. That's some awesome news. It damn sure, it's damn sure been a long battle with RMS, but they have definitely stepped up and helped. I'm not getting anywhere near the 307k I am owed, but as long as I can pay my contractors and make them whole, that's all that matters right now. True. And that's a good thing that, that, that this guy, Mr. Harris, is looking out. But I have a question for Mr. Harris, and a lot of people have asked me the same thing. And my recommendation to a lot of people was, hey, look, negotiate something with them. If they're telling you 8000 bucks and it took you 12000 to get the job done, negotiate it with them. The way I'm interpreting this, it's been a long battle. He went back and forth. But I asked this to Mr. Harris, and this is for everybody. If you can't, just put a comment down below, yes or no. Obviously, there was not a non-disclosure, an NDA uh, attached to this, because he's, you're, you're speaking in social media. But what I'd like to know, and what many people want to know, did, are you forced to relinquish any other avenues of collection? What I have recommended to people, if RMS, Fannie Mae or HUD, steps up on this NFN issue and says, hey, look, we'll do 20%. We'll help you out a little bit. Okay, fine. You have to remove all the lien. You have to waive the lien. I don't have a problem with that element, and this is why. My contract was with NFN, not RMS. If RMS is stepping up and say, hey, they're out of line, we're going to help you a little bit, they know they need people to continue doing the work, they're in a bad position too. So they step in and they help out. This is coming out of their pocket because according to what I'm hearing, these, num these contracts have been paid, the, the work orders have been paid. They just stole the money, okay? Mr. This is my question to Mr. Harris. Are you free to pursue other avenues for collection? Yeah, and it's just a simple yes or no. That's all we need to know because if they're not forcing you to stop all collection procedures, you can still attach to the bankruptcy and get something out of that. You can still sue Sherry, not in her personal capacity. Jack Jaffa, he owns a place in his personal capacity. They know what's going on. And my gut feeling, ladies and gentlemen, it's a money laundering operation is what NFN is. It's not the first time this has happened, and it's happened in big numbers in the past and now we're at a hundred million a hundred million dollars mr harris are you free to pursue other avenues of collection after rms has worked with you a little bit and you negotiated whatever you did with them we we don't need details we just need to know you're free to call to go down other avenues. Something else, Connie Harrelson. I'm not sure who Connie is. She knows some uppity ups over there at Safeguard. She's got to know somebody. She says she does. So we're going to take her at her word. Just to make you feel better, Five Brothers was bought by a family member in Safeguard. Let that sink in. Hello. Uh, uh, Connie, when did this take place? This is from Mark Nelson. When did this take place? News to me. And of course, John Kruger. Oh, do tell. If you have the scoop, let us have the poop. And I agree. What's really going on, Connie? Who's the high up? You can leave a comment down below so it's not in public. Uh, 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 but it wasn't that long ago I talked to a higher up in Safeguard. She left and said sooner or later they will own them all. Money talks. I don't think they're going to own them all. And the reason being, there's going to be some legal ramifications of Jack Joffa on this NFN, National Management Preservation Services issue, National 
Association of Management for Stealing Members. That's what I'm talking about. Back to that insurance issue for just a minute. Additionally insured, you got to give all that information up and additionally insured. You got to do all this background stuff and all this stuff. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that's how ID theft, identity theft happens. All that information floating around in cyberland. Floating around in cyberland. Hey, we have, we have, I'm going to get this link in the description. We have a survey, a property preservation industry survey. Some of the questions, would the property preservation industry benefit if labor organized? 84% of the people say yes, it would. Not just labor, but the industry as a whole. I agree. How long have you been in the property preservation industry? One to three, 22%. Three to five years, 21, five to seven. 22%, so less than seven years in business in the property preservation industry, we have 65% of the people in the survey. 11%, uh, uh, 15 plus years, 10 to 15, 9%, and 15% at seven to 10. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the humidity is working me. I'm going to sneeze here in just a minute. Hey, oh. Baby. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Hey. It's working me. It's working me. A lot of pollen. All the oaks are in bloom, man. Really cool. Uh, really cool all around here. The third question was, do you have multiple clients? 91% of people said, yes, they do. If you, this question is really critical. Do you feel if you voice your opinion and speak out of the ills in the property preservation industry, it will have an adverse effect on your business, 65% of the people say, yes, it will. And this is kind of funny. This kind of flips things around. Do you feel if you belong to an organization that supported labor, it would hurt the workloads? 45% of the people say no. I'm sorry, 45% of the people said yes. 65 said no, it wouldn't hurt the workloads. Eh, that could be true. I'm not sure. Do you feel if you're a boots on the ground contractor and you speak out, will it hurt you as a boots on the ground contractor? And this is what I don't understand. If you belong to an organization, they've already said 65% of the people say if you speak out, it'll hurt their business. 87% of the people said if they speak out as a boots on the ground member, not with anonymity or anything like that, they felt it would have an adverse effects. The next two questions tie into each other. Do you think a union would benefit the property preservation industry? 51% say yes. Would you join? 51% say yes. Uh, uh, if you could change one issue, the top three issues in the industry are what popped up. Pay, of course, was number one. Number of order mills was number two. Get rid of and people are saying, get rid of like 95% of all the order mills. And I agree, I agree. Quality training programs. And of course, uh, uh, IFAST has been talking to me. I've been talking to them. We're, we're working on uh, uh, some stuff. You know, I did stuff with NARPI International. Uh, uh, shame on John Allen for what he did. But uh, uh, we, we have tried to do quality education, certified education, something that shows you did some training and you understand the industry. Here's the other one. The very last question in this survey. And, and I'll get the link in the description, ladies and gentlemen, so you can participate in this survey. Do you feel that there is an organization in the industry that fairly represents labor? 20% said yes. 80% say no. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. There's nothing going on for labor in the industry except the National Association of Management for Stealing. Let's see if we have anything else that's come in while we've been talking today. This is what the judge said on the, uh, uh, it, it's uh, uh, Gilbane, and I forget, let me see here, uh, uh, Gilbane and somebody else, uh, uh, the case was, it's called the Gilbane decision. Um, 
And it's an issue of privity, addressing the contractual privity issue. Uh, uh, insurance services office, uh, that's who Gil Bain uh, uh, took to court. But here's what the judge said in this. Um, across the country, disputes, disputes have arisen as to the necessary scope of that written contract and whether certain language requires that there be a direct contract. And that is the crux of that, just as a recap. The crux is no direct contract. I shouldn't be additionally insuring anybody if I do not have a contract tied in with them. And of course, you know, Eric Miller has supervised since 2007. He has helped Pyramid. It's his brainchild. To, to get all these members paying each other, subbing the work to each other, and oh, by the way, buying supplies from their brother, buying uh, uh, insurance from their buddy, uh, uh, getting background checks from a third world country. We don't need background checks done by somebody in Ireland, ladies and gentlemen, who, by the way, lied on four applications for business licenses here in the United States and was caught. Uh, uh, we just don't need that. We don't need that going on. You get a... a, a you get a background check and a credit check when you're doing a Sam's account. Yeah. Uh, you know, a Duns in Bradstreet, uh, 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 a Duns, what they call a Duns number. Uh, all this stuff verifies who you are, your, your background, and what your capabilities are. Capabilities. Speaking of capabilities, getting the software to do capability statements, folks. If you need a capability statement, I got to give myself shameless self promotion plug. We can help. We can help. We do them 75 bucks. Cheap, easy peasy, Japanese, as they say, out the door. If you need some assistance, let me know. We can help out. Boy, I'll tell you, man, that <clears throat> there is pollen in the air like you won't believe here. And everybody's telling me it's a little late in the season. That normally it's like six weeks ago, but they had that frost six weeks ago. A couple, a couple real heavy, hard frost down to 22, 25 overnight, and it, you know, it retarded the bloom. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, I, I wish it had happened back then, and I got it over with because it's really annoying. Really, and the humidity, as I said, is just. I am not acclimated yet, ladies and gentlemen, and it. I'll tell you, the humidity is working me, working me bad. But, but, if you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up. It's time to get out of here, folks. It's time to get out of here. Uh, uh, if you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the station. If you can help out, hit the website. Donation tab is right on the side. And let's see what we got going on here. Let's see what we got going on here. No, no, no. I don't want to do a survey. Foreclosurepedia.org, ladies and gentlemen, up to the minute fraud reporting on the property preservation industry, up to the minute fraud reporting. We're going to let Scott Joplin take us out as we're in Joplin, Missouri. 1902, and of course, this is called The Entertainer and the movie, The Steam. Robert Redford. Robert Redford. What was the guy with him? What was the guy with him? Uh, 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 Paul Newman, Redford and Newman. The, inter the, the Entertainer and the Steam was the movie. What a great movie that was, too. That was a good movie. Hey, folks. You know what time it is. Let's have a great day. Let's all be safe out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got any questions you want us to ask this former NFN employee? Put them in the description down below. Let's have a great day.